An important feature in the Shutterstream product photography software is the camera control. I'm first going to enable my live view that will stream a real-time preview of what my camera sees onto my monitor and I will position my subject accordingly. After placing my object what I will do is hit the control camera by left clicking that and that's going to pull up our camera settings window. Now these are dynamically populated. Uh, if you're a user of the software and have a different camera than the Canon Rebel that I'm working with, you might see some additional features inside of here, more specifically under the advanced settings. Uh, we are dynamically pulling the camera settings from the camera. So things might look a tad bit different. Uh, rest assured all the camera settings, kind of the main camera settings will be very consistent with what you're seeing here. So with our camera settings, uh, first and foremost, users do have full control of kind of the exposure settings, your aperture, ISO, white balance, shutter speed. To make an adjustment to any of these, users can go ahead and click. And if you watch the live view window, you're gonna see as I make a change, we're seeing the result in real time uh, reflect those changes. That's something called exposure simulation. We're compatible to close to 100 different cameras. The majority of these cameras support uh, live view exposure simulation. However, there is a few older Nikons that do not support this feature. Uh, so just be aware. And if you have questions about that, reach out to us and we can, we can let you know if your camera does have live view exposure simulation. So users, what they want to do in this step is just optimize their camera settings for their lighting environment, whether you're working with an Iconosys lighting environment, uh, we can certainly provide you the correct settings, or if you're working with your own, uh, you can play around and just find your optimal settings. Now, after users have defined camera settings, what users can do is actually create a profile. So I'm just gonna call this um, white shoe profile, for instance, and maybe users have a different camera setting profile for a white versus a black product. And let's place our black shoe in front of the camera now. And I would say, okay, maybe it's a little bit, a uh, little bit underexposed here. So I'm going to change my camera setting by one stop on the shutter speed. I can go ahead and create another profile. So I'm just going to call this black shoe. So users can create multiple different uh, camera setting profiles, as you can see here, and on the fly revert back and select whatever camera setting profile they did want. The nice thing about that is after the software has been set up and the settings have been optimized for um, you know the different product variations, I guess, um, the knowledge of how to create a good quality product photograph will stay inside of the software. So and just to kind of touch on that here, users can go ahead and delete profiles. So you select the profile, you click the X button, and that will delete that profile and users can also update profiles if they want so if they said okay this is a little bit a uh, little bit too dark i want to just drop the shutter speed once i click the update profile button and you see profile white shoe updated all right so the next thing we're going to do here is let me just revert back next thing we're going to do here is look at our capture mode users do have the option to shoot in manual focus or autofocus let me just move my subject back into the center. Um, starting with this and to kind of touch on it a bit more, obviously MF is manual focus. Um, whatever focal point has been set, when I hit the snap button, if it is in MF capture mode, it will use that. To give you a couple examples here, there we go, is snap. Let me hit live view. And I'm actually gonna crop this subject here just so you can see it a bit more up close. Um, so let me just make a blurry image and I'll touch on the focal point adjustment uh, really briefly here. Um, users have the ability to drive their lens near and far to adjust the focal point. So it looks blurry in the camera setting live view. Um, I'm shooting in manual focus. We're gonna capture a blurry image. And it's not quite as blurry as it looked, but uh, I assure you that is not a crisp, clear image. Let me hit live view again there. As you can see, we're still blurry. Now, if I use autofocus, when I capture an image, if I hit snap here, it's going to autofocus the camera. 
And as we can see, a fully in focused image. Uh, again, that's using the camera's autofocus setting. Let me revert back to live view. Now, users have the ability to, obviously, as I touched on, adjust their focal point. So, users, and just what you see in the center of the screen here, this is actually going to define the autofocus area and the one to one viewfinder. So you see two little rectangles and you can actually move that around by right clicking in the live view. For instance, if for any reason I wanted to focus on the heel of the shoe, um, what I could do is right click there and when I hit snap, it's going to autofocus using that point on the shoe. Now the other option would be a manual focus, um, but defining my crop manually. So let me go ahead and Again, this is also the one-to-one -one viewfinder, so I'm going to zoom in at one-to-one, -one, and as you can see, it showed me on the heel here, and what I can do now is, through mouse clicks, choose my focal point and make adjustments. So I'm just clicking the two arrow here, and you can see it brought everything back into focus, and that looks like the back of the heel, or the back of the shoe is in focus there. Three arrows will move a large increment, two arrows a medium increment, one arrow, a small increment. Let me just go back to fit to screen. And the other thing that we can do here is right click on an area that we wish to focus on. And I can say, hey camera, autofocus on that area. And you're gonna see it will quickly autofocus on that area. And if I go and view up close, you can see it did a pretty good job at, at focusing on the, the toe of the shoe there. And if we did need to ever make small adjustments, like you see I just did there, you can do so by clicking the near and far um, arrow adjustments. So that is your manual focal point adjustment and shooting an autofocus versus manual focus. Last thing here is users can get a depth of field preview. So in the live view, um, if you toggle this on, you can see what's in focus versus what's not in focus. And I won't touch on the advanced settings just because these are going to change based on your camera type. Um, but just note that there will be options in there available to your specific camera. If you're not familiar with those, you can reach out to us. Your camera's user guide will probably also have very good uh, explanations of all those advanced setting features too. Uh, last thing here is users can minimize and maximize these individual areas as required. And uh, that is adjusting our camera settings. Camera settings, again, will be retained from shot to shot. So if I hit snap right there, it's going to capture the image. If I hit live view again, and I place my object to my next image there, and I hit snap, it's gonna capture that again. So you're gonna see it's retaining the image, or sorry, the camera settings from shot to shot. just to ensure that we're getting consistent images, one, two, and three. So that's, uh, that's our camera control settings. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.